Hello and welcome to our webinar, Wire Harness Design Automation Basics 1. My name is Hans-Peter Blair. I'm Senior Pre-Sales Engineer for a 3 Series at Zoken. Here is the agenda for our webinar. First, we will get an overview about the whole Wire Harness Design process. Next, we will have a closer look to the logical part of the design process. Additional to the slides, you will get a solution demo. And at the end, we will do a short summary. Let's get a brief overview about the complete wire harness design process. In the wiring diagram, we design the function of our system, using symbols or components, connect them and assign signals, wires and cables. For a complex system, we can use a 2D view to define installation spaces. After placing components and adding a routing pass, we will get a rough plan about the harness topology. Wiring diagram and topology covers the logical part of the design process. To go on in the process, we can import data from topology design or from the wiring diagram into the original 3D environment to do the routing there. To create a cabling board or so-called form board, we can import the 3D harness and generate a 2D harness drawing in a scale one-to-one. -one. If you do not use a 3D mechanical cut system, you can import data direct from the wiring diagram or topology design. Additional to the 2D drawing of the harness, we need lists like a bill of material, cable list, cutting list and so on for manufacturing and for service. 3D routing, cabling board and manufacturing information belongs to the physical part of the design process. In this webinar, we will focus on the logical part of the design process starting with the wiring diagram. Three steps to create a wiring diagram. Placing symbols and components, you can start symbol oriented to design a function and assign components later, or you can start directly with components. Connect symbols and components and assign signals. And at last, assigning cables and wires. In this example, we start the wiring diagram with a block. That's a symbol for a dynamic component. From the component library, we select a connector and assign him to the block. Next, we import a complete block with assigned connectors and signals as a path file. In the signals tree, you will see the signals coming from the imported block. When we highlight a signal, the appropriate symbols will be indicated. With drag and drop, we can assign signals to other connectors as well, and this will show the connection logic. Then we select the LED from the component library and place the LED in the wiring diagram. We need a fuse, but we don't know which type in the moment, so we go to the symbols library and select a symbol for the moment. Then we do the same for a lamp. Now we are doing the connections from the block to the fuse from the fuse to the lamp and back to the block. Then we make a multiple connection from block to block and we connect the LED. From the signals tree we assign the signal AA and signal BB to the connect lines coming from the LED and the logic lines to the appropriate connectors will be shown. 
The signal helps to prevent a shortcut as you can see in the left lower corner. There are two possibilities for the connection. For one connection, we select the splice as a component. This will split the connection into three wires later. The next connection we want to connect to connect to X5. Therefore, we show the connection direction. Now it's time to change our symbols into components. Therefore, is 3 series show all valid components for the selected symbol. For the fuse, we select a 2 ampere fuse and for the lamp, we do the same. Now we select a 12 volt and 5 watt lamp. And when this was done, it's time to assign cables and wires. In the component library, we have a lot of different cables and wires, as you can see. We select the wire with 12 conductors or cores and assign them to the connect lines in the wiring diagram. Then we will select the wire group and assign some wires to the connection. In this example, we use AWG wires. The lamp should be connected with a connector so we select one in our component library and place them directly on the connect line. The connect line was split it up and the mating part was also placed. And now we do the same with the contact number two of this connector. There is a great variety of components with different connection types available. There are components with connectors, ring or flat connectors, pin terminals and cage clamp technique. But don't worry about this because the connection type is part of the component information described in the library and has a direct impact to the mating connector parts. See here. In this example, we select the connector and show the device properties. There in the connector pin terminals, you could see that there are two possible crimp parts assigned. This means the wire will be connected by a crimp part. Next, we open the device properties for the lamp and take a look at the pins. We can see the connection type is screwed. This means we need an end sleeve or a pin terminal for the connected wire. Here you can see the different possibilities for the connection type. When we open the device properties of the LED, and we look at the top for the pins, we will see that there is a mating part which defines the connector which has to be used to connect the LED. Each connector normally has a mating part. Sounds complicated, but it's very easy in reality. The mating part is assigned to the connector in the library and will be placed automatically.
See here. Each connector has a mating part, which is placed automatically when we do a connection in the wiring diagram. Let's have a look to this D sub connector in the component library. In the pin section, we will see three different valid mating parts. One of them is defined as active mating part. Now we place the connector on the wiring diagram. Before we do the connections, we open the device properties and in the pin section we select one of the three valid mating parts to be the active mating part. When we connect now, the selected mating part will be placed automatically and the user must not take care for this. Here you see this mating part. Connectors are very complex components with a lot of additional parts. For example, we have a housing, crimp parts to connect the wires, jog blocks to fix the crimp parts inside the housing, ceiling parts for connectors in wet areas, seals or ceiling mats for wires and rubber plugs for empty slots in the housing, covers for the housing, special cover caps and for example dust covers to protect not yet connected connectors. Those additional parts can be added to a connector in the library or interactive in the wiring diagram. The big advantage is getting the added parts also in the bill of material automatically. A connector can be a complex component with a lot of additional parts. We select a connector in the component library and show his device properties. Here we see all related article data for the connector. The attribute additional part includes a link to the part number of the connector's housing in the component library. Here you can see the houses, housing in the preview window. Using this connector, the housing will appear in the bill of material as an additional part automatically. Here you can see this additional part. And now when we create a bill of material, you will see that this additional part is also uh, part of the bill of material. Here we see the connector itself, here we see the housing and also the crim parts were shown in the bill of material automatically as additional parts. Now we place a second connector without additional part and then we open the device properties and we add the attribute additional part interactive. We write in the part number of the housing and save this. This can be done more than one time and so we could add more than one additional part. Now in the bill of material you will see connector X2, the connector and here you will see the housing and also the additional crimp parts are in the bill of material. There are a lot of different cables and wires with a lot of different attributes available on the market. All these attributes, for example the cross section in square millimeter or AWG are stored in the library and will help to select the right cable or wire. In this example, we want to assign a cable to some connection lines. Therefore, we open the components library and jump to cables. In this folder, you will find a lot of different types of cables. 
Here, for example, you will see an assembly with three connectors and two cables. We place the assembly in our wiring diagram and get all the connectors and cables with their related conductors or cores. Let's make undo and select one of the cables. Here we have a cable with seven shielded conductors or cores. We select the conductors or cores and assign them continuously to the connect lines. In the device tree, we can select and place the shield directly into the wiring diagram. Now we connect the shield to the backshell pins of the connectors and you will see the logic line between the shield symbols because they have the same signal. Let's connect the shield only on one side. It is also possible to work with single wires. Therefore, we create a dynamic cable and add some single wires from one of the wire groups in our component library. Let's add AWG18 black and also AWG18 red. Then we add some dynamic conductors or cores. In the device properties of this cable, you will see the conductors or cores 1 and 2. They are physical wires from the library and have a wire type, a wire color, cross section and an outer diameter. We can assign a cross section, outer diameter and a color to the dynamic conductors or cores also. Next, we want to twist conductor or core 1 and 2. And now we want to shield conductor or core 9 and 10. We select all, core, uh, all conductors or cores and assign them uh, to the connect lines in the wiring diagram in one step. We place the twisted symbol and the symbol for the shield automatically. Placing an additional twist or shield symbol direct in the wiring diagram will have a direct impact to the cable in the device tree. Modifying the size of the symbol has also direct impact to the device tree. Here you can see the additional shield and we resize this shield and you see the direct impact on the device tree. So far for cables, conductors or cores and wires. Most connectors have multiple crimp parts available. Don't worry, there is a relation between the cross section of the connected wire, conductor or core and the crimp part. So the crimp part will be selected automatically. As we already have seen, a connector can have multiple crimp parts. To show you this, we will import a part file with an example. Let's take a closer look to the left connector. For this example, we have an additional text node showing the active connector pin terminal. Normally, this text node is not showed. 
When we look at the connector pin terminal in the device properties, you will see two possible crimp parts are available for this connector. One 0.75 square millimeter and a second with 2.5 square millimeter. Before we assign a wire to this connector, let's have a look into the settings of E3 series and switch on Use Conductor or Core to select Connector Pin Terminal. Now we select the wire group and there we select the wire with a cross section of 0.5 square millimeters and try to assign this wire. As you can see, this is not possible because there is no valid crimp part or connector pin terminal for 0.5 square millimeter available. Next try with 0.75 and you will see this will work and the crimp part was changed to 0.75. And of course it was replaced on the other side. Trying a wire with 4 square millimeters will also result in an error message. Next we try a AWG18 which will work and select the crimp part for 0.75 square millimeter. You see we can work with square millimeter and also with AWG format. Here we have a sealed connector. The active crim part in the component library is a rubber plug to seal the housing when there is no wire connected. Additional to the rubber plug, we have four crim parts for different cross sections. Assigning a wire will change the rubber plug into a valid crimp part. So far for the crimp part selection. Using data from PCB layout. There is a function to import information about connectors and signals from the PCB board layout. This will simplify the creating of the wiring diagram and improve the quality. This solution demo shows how to place a block and import connector and signal information from a PCB layout system with a CSV file. After importing the CSV file, we see a pin of a connector on the block. To show more details, we will split the connector pins to show each pin. Next we import a part file from another PCB layout. During the placement of this block, you will already see the connection logic. This will help to find the optimal position to place the block. The logic lines show the signals imported from the PCB layout and will help to do the connections. The signals on the connector pins imported from the PCB layout and the online checks of E3 series will take care that you cannot make any shortcut as you can see here. Here we have to cross the connection lines And if this was done, we import another block. And import additional PCB information also for this block. And after splitting the pins of this connector, we can do a multi-line connection from one block to the other. And if this was done, we can move the connected block 
to another position and you will see the connect lines will also be moved. It is difficult to dimension components, cables and wires in an early stage. Normally you have to do a lot of calculations parallel to your wiring diagram or in other systems like Excel. What about if this will be done automatically while designing the wiring diagram? There is a possibility to do this. In the settings menu of E3 series you can see the parameters for the electrical checks. For this example we switch on the checks and start designing a wiring diagram. From the component library we select the battery as a power supply. To do the calculations for the electrical checks we need a ground symbol as base for the calculation. We connect the ground symbol to the negative terminal of the battery. Doing this we will see 13 volt on the positive terminal on the right side of the battery. Next we place a fuse and the lamp and connect them. For each connected symbol you will see the voltage and when the circuit is closed the lamp will be shown as active in a yellow color and you also will see the current in the text nodes of the symbols. To activate and deactivate the lamp, we will insert a check switch now. The lamp is deactivated and changing the state of the check switch we can activate the lamp. Here are some icons to switch on or off the lamp and you will see what happens. Now we change the lamp to another component with more power and see what happens. The fuse is marked in red, the lamp is, ac is not active and in the results windows we get a message that the fuse was blown. Now changing the fuse to another component to a fuse with 5 amperes will solve the problem. Let's make another example. We have a circuit with a lamp which is active in the moment. Changing the wire lengths from 1000 mm to 2000 mm will also change the wire resistance. Therefore, the voltage is below the minimum voltage of the lamp, so the lamp won't work. To solve the problem, we can change the size of the cross-section of the wire from AWG30 to AWG18 and you will see the lamp will work. The other possibility is to change the lamp to another lamp which has less power than the first one. And you will see the lamp is active again. Another example shows a circuit with an active lamp. When we place a connector and his mating part into the connection line of the lamp, the contact resistance will lead to an inactive lamp. To solve the problem, we also can change the cross-section of the related wires, or we can choose another lamp. So we change 
from AWG 30 to AWG 18 and the lamp will be active again. The wiring diagram is completed, so the next step will be a rough design of the harness. Complex vehicles or machines mostly offer different alternatives for the wiring. The challenge will be to arrange the component and do an efficient routing. Let's see what topology can do for us. Four steps to create a topology diagram. First import the 2D graphic. Then define the installation spaces. Place the components in the installation spaces and define the routing paths. Done. Let's start with the wiring diagram with three blocks and their connectors connected with a cable and with single wires. Here you see the conductors or cores of the cable and you can see the last conductor or core of this cable is not connected. And we see the single wires on the other side. To make a topology design, we insert a sheet and mark this sheet as topology sheet. This allows to use a scale factor. Next, we import the image with a 2D graphic. We change the level of the image to a read-only level to protect the graphic. Then we use block symbols to define the installation spaces. We select components from the functional objects tree on the left side and place them with drag and drop into an installation space. This will change the color of the installation space. Connections to other components are shown as rubber bands during the placement. Connecting the blocks defines a routing pass. Logic lines will help to do the connections. Cables and wires were automatically assigned to the routing pass and the appropriate harness will arise in the functional objects tree. The segment diameter shows all cables with their conductors or cores and single wires in the selected routing pass. Additional information about lengths, weight and costs will be available in the connection properties. The additional routing pass generates an additional harness in the tree with all related information. Here we see the segment diameter and also the connection properties of the new routing pass. Let's define one more routing pass and move the component from the right installation space to the installation space on the bottom. This has a direct impact on the harnesses in the functional objects tree. Hitting a connect line with the cursor will show all related information about this routing pass like connection from two signals and wires. Now the segment diameter has increased because the cable and the single wires are in the same segment now. You will get actual information in the connection properties and also in the Excel file. Moving components 
into other installation spaces and checking the related information and results helps to compare different topologies and concepts at an early stage in the process. What are the benefits of a topology design? You will get a rough estimation about the cable and wire lengths, costs and weight at an early stage. Based on the information of topology, you can change and modify the topology to compare different concepts. Cables and wires are routed automatically along the possible routing passes. Cables and wires were automatically assigned to a harness, so you will get one or more harnesses. A lot of detailed information will be available, for example, the diameter of each segment of a harness. Let's make a conclusion what we have learned today. Wire harness design is very complex and there is an urgent need for automation. We got an overview on the wire harness design process and we focused on the logical part of the design process. Here you could see the benefits of design automation. We have seen how to design a function and create a wiring diagram, easy and efficient. Don't worry about connection types, additional parts and mating connectors. Intelligent components will take care for this. Cables and wires with a lot of attributes will extend the wiring diagram and automatically select the appropriate crimp parts. Data from PCB layout can be used and will speed up the design time of the wiring diagram. Online checks and calculations direct from the beginning of the design will increase the quality. How to optimize placement, routing and costs by doing a topology design at an early stage of the design process. If you have any questions, please let us know and contact Suken under www.suken.com. Thank you for participating in this webinar. Looking forward to see you again. Bye.